On the outskirts of Dalesford in central Victoria is the home and garden of ceramicist Tanya Verdes. Her work as a potter reflects her deep connection to and love of her garden. I think there's a real crossover with gardens and potters. Every potter that I've met is a gardener. How gorgeous are these? Banksias. I'm I currently completely obsessed with Banksias. I've joined a Banksia group on Facebook and I'm just in love. There's so many amazing ones. What's going on here? This is a slug mug. <laughs> this is for a friend who makes slug teddy bears. And this is a mushroom cup for the mushroom lover. I'm impressed with your plants too. Thank you. This is my favourite indoor plant. It was a gift from my husband. Watermelon pep. <laughs> Watermelon pep, I like that. Oh, and it's so easy to look after and so easy to propagate and give to your friends. I notice you've got loads of stuff on the propagate here. Yeah, it's um, unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you knock a leaf off. Yeah, every time you knock a leaf off, it becomes a plant that gets gifted to a friend. about the big picture of this garden. Where did it start? So we bought it in 2010. We'd already planned the house. And what was here? Nothing. It was just a paddock. Absolutely nothing. Well, the first thing I planted was an olive tree out on the nature strip there. And to be honest, it was just so emotional planting it. I didn't know it was gonna be emotional, but I planted it and I just went, oh my God, I'm gonna be here to see all these things grow and kind of return this empty piece of grass to a beautiful garden. My mum always gardened when I was a kid. We moved around a lot. I had a pretty traumatic childhood, like, we were very poor and we moved a lot, but my mum always gardened. She always took cuttings from other people's gardens and, you know, she was always trying to improve things, even though we knew we weren't going to be there long and we'd move on and we'd do it again at the next one. I never met my real father, but I met his family recently and apparently he was an absolute green thumb and he grew all his own fruit and veggies and everything, so it's obviously in the genes. This is a pretty impressive little vegetable garden. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, it's come a long way and uh, in a short amount of time, really. It's starting to feel like a garden. I'm very impressed with this. It's my new system. It's a new system, all right. Yes, so we just wind them up around the string with a central leader and you prune any leaves that are under the first fruit. Yep. Um, and take off any of the side leaders, like this one here that I just saw that I missed. So you can just pinch that out yep. and just keep twisting them around. So you get less fruit on each plant, but you can put more plants in the same amount of space, so. It's almost like the system they use in greenhouse growing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, and you get a lot more airflow, so you get less diseases. I notice that a lot of your flowers are kind of like big, bold, structural things. I imagine they're really inspirational for your other creative work. Absolutely. I use a lot of the sort of shapes and motifs in my work, especially the poppy heads. I love those, the artichokes. This valerian over the back there, that sort of beautiful structure. It's so nice to draw and paint. Talk about beautiful form. These snow gums are totally gorgeous. They're one of my favourite plants, Millie. It's grown so well here in this climate and they're just so beautiful and so beautiful to draw and paint and use in my work. They have exquisite white flowers on them. I completely adore this. So there's the snow gums in its finished form. And that's the parallel veins, it's like, that's the distinct... Yeah, and those beautiful fluffy white flowers with their little seeds. I like a bit of whimsy, a little bit of fun. I try to think about the people owning them having a little laugh and being happy and just getting some joy from the pieces. For Tanya, there are no boundaries between her art and her garden. It's impossible to imagine one existing without the other. And even more than inspiring her art, her garden has given her a sense of belonging. 
It's been so healing, seriously. Like, it's, it's almost like a spiritual practice, you know, and it's an investment in the future. You're planting something and you're saying, I'm going to be here to see this grow. It's great. This is my first real home. And I really wanted that for my kids to have a place where they had roots and felt secure. <laughs>